Hello economic students. Today we're going to get back to the supply and demand model and we're going to introduce today the concept of supply. And I'm starting off this presentation with a photograph here. Um, take, take a look at this photo. See if you can figure out where it might have been taken. Uh, there's a few clues. Of course, what's the industry that you see here? Um, looks like, you know, oil, chemicals, that sort of thing. Uh, and way over here we have a skyline, so it's a pretty big city, and um, it is in the United States. And uh, this happens to be the city of Houston, and we're looking at the port of Houston. And actually, if you were in the center of the port of Houston, and you drew a circle with a 50-mile radius, with the center of that circle being at the port of Houston, you would be incorporating in that circle about one third of all the processing facilities in the United States for to change crude oil into a usable product such as gasoline or kerosene or plastics or paint. So um, yeah, this is a very important part of the American economy and it's a very important uh, element for supply of crude oil and products that are made from crude oil. So let's go ahead and get into a discussion of supply. First of all, as we often do, we'll start off with some definitions. Here's the definition of supply. It's the quantity of a good or service that producers are willing and able to sell at different prices at a specific time. It's a lot like the definition of demand, only with demand we were looking at what consumers were willing and able to buy. Here is what producers are willing and able to sell. And notice just as with demand, we're talking about a specific time. Supply is a snapshot in time. So the supply of crude oil today will be different than the supply of crude oil tomorrow. Uh, the supply of basketballs today will change and it will be different than the supply of basketballs next week. So supply, like demand, is always changing. When we look at supply, we're looking at a specific snapshot in time. We also have a law of supply, and that is that there is a positive relationship between the quantity supplied and the price of the product. Remember, with the law of demand, it was an inverse relationship. With the law of supply, it is a positive relationship. So when we have a positive relationship, that means that if the price of a product should go up, the quantity of that product that would be supplied should also go up. If the price goes down, the quantity supplied will go down. That's a positive relationship. Quantity moves in the same direction as price. Supply costs will rise as the quantity produced increases, and that is why uh, the law of supply basically is in effect. Uh, as supply costs go up, we're going to demand a greater price for the product in order to cover those higher supply costs. Here's what supply looks like graphically. Again, we have an axis that shows us the price and another axis that shows us the quantity supplied. And notice that the supply line slopes upward. The demand line slope downward, supply line slopes upward, which shows that it is that positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. <clears throat> when we graph supply, it's going to look like this. Again, we have the P and the Q axes, just as we did with demand. And now we have an upward sloping line, which is the supply line. I might also call it a supply curve. It's the same thing. But it is upward sloping as opposed to the demand curve, which was downward sloping. So I mentioned that uh, the price per unit tends to increase as we increase supply. And there are some reasons for that. So let's look at some reasons why the cost per unit increases as we supply more of that product to the market. First, the main answer is, as more of a product is produced, the marginal cost of production tends to increase. Now, what does that mean? Remember that word marginal from earlier in the semester. That is the next thing. A marginal means the next thing. So if we produce a product, let's say we produce 100 units of a product. We have a cost per unit. If I produce 105 units of that same product, those next five units that I produce are going to have a higher cost of production than the ones that preceded it. My marginal cost of production has increased. Why is that? Well, 
Think about it. Uh, if I'm increasing production, I might have to hire more workers. So that increases my production costs. If I increase production, I might have to use more electricity in order to increase production. That too will increase my production costs. So the marginal cost of production will go up the more of a product that I supply. And here's an example of a product that uh, illustrates, I think, this fact. Uh, the bottom left picture was taken outside of Beaumont, Texas uh, in the early 1900s at the Spindletop oil field. Um, back in about 1903, I think it was, um, a guy was drilling some for, for, for a well, uh, a water well, and he hit an oil pocket and it was probably the first big oil gusher in American history. All of a sudden there was a rumbling and the pipes of his uh, drilling mechanism shot out of the ground into the sky and all of a sudden a bunch of oil just spewed up in the air about 50 feet. Um, it was a huge gusher and overnight, overnight the quantity of oil in the world, uh, the reserves that were available in the world practically you know doubled or tripled it was a huge oil find so in 1903 it was very easy then to find the oil okay you didn't have to drill very deep it was there available for you um, it was easy and cheap to extract well all that oil from that spindle top oil field is now gone now if they want to find more oil they've got to go to places where it's much more costly to find it such as out in the gulf of mexico or instead of drilling down a thousand feet they might have to drill down four thousand feet they have to it's, it's going to be more expensive to find the oil that they find out here in the gulf of mexico versus spindle top the cost of production has increased as we need more and more oil now let's look at supply and demand and its relationship to macroeconomics. Um, first of all, we had a definition of market demand. We also have a definition of market supply. The total of all individual suppliers' products in a market at a particular time is our market supply. So I, if I were a producer of basketballs, I have my own supply uh, line, my own supply curve. Someone else who produces basketballs would have a different supply curve. So if we add up all of the supply curves of all of the basketball makers in the world, we would get the market supply. We also have a price elasticity of supply. That's a measure of the impact of price changes on supplier behavior. So some companies have what we would call an elastic supply curve. Others have an inelastic supply curve. So the quantity of what they produce on the market isn't going to change a whole lot based on a change in price. That would be inelastic. Um, as, uh, on the other hand, some corporations would have a very elastic supply curve where a relatively small change in price would have a fairly large impact on the quantity that the producer is willing to supply. So here we have three different supply curves or supply lines. Uh, which one is elastic and which one is inelastic? Well, just as with demand, an inelastic supply curve has a steep slope, and an elastic supply curve has a gentle slope. So supply line number one has a very steep slope. That is an inelastic supply curve. Supply curve number three has a very gentle slope, so that one is an, an elastic supply slope. So make sure you remember that. Uh, steep is inelastic, a gentle slope is very elastic. So if someone is producing something and their supply line looks like supply number three, that means that if the price should change for the product, then they're going to have a very large change in the quantity that they supply. That's elasticity. Okay, so why is supply more elastic for some products than it is for others? Well, First of all, uh, the marginal cost of production is higher for some products than it is for others. So if you have a very high marginal cost of production, that is if production costs increase a lot as you increase production, then you're going to have a very elastic supply curve. The higher the marginal cost of production, the more elastic your production would be. Some businesses can respond more quickly to a change in price for their products. So if I'm able to respond quickly to a change in prices, I'm going to have a more elastic product, a more elastic supply for that product. If I cannot change or respond quickly to price changes, then my supply curve is going to be inelastic. 
Okay, so which do you think would be more elastic in this situation? I have two products here. You probably don't know what the product on the upper left is, but that is a product that was created right here in Rockford, Illinois. And that big machine that's on that flatbed of a train car uh, actually is used to make the fuselage of airplanes. The fuselage is the big, you know, tube part of an airplane. That item costs something around the neighborhood of a million dollars. Okay, so which would be more elastic, this thing here or Coca-Cola? Well, Coca-Colas are going to be much more elastic than this thing. This has high production costs. And uh, if the price should change on, on the items that go into this, they're not going to do a whole lot. You know, they've already put a lot of effort into the production of this expensive item. Uh, they cannot respond to a price change very quickly where Coca-Cola can. So Coca-Cola is going to be much more elastic than that uh, machine that makes a fuselage of a plane. How about here? Here's the actual production facility for Boeing. They're making airplanes. We also have a front desk here who's selling airline tickets, which would be more elastic. Well, uh, if you change the price of airline tickets, people are going to respond more rapidly in whether or not they choose to fly. Whereas if we change the price of airplanes, then the companies that buy airplanes like United Airlines or American Airlines, whoever the case may be, they're still going to probably buy the planes, okay, even as the cost of the plane goes up. Uh, it's not easy, uh, and therefore the companies that supply them are still going to be supplying them. It's not easy for them to automatically just shut off production facilities for a huge expensive item like an airplane. So airplanes are going to be inelastic. Airline tickets would be very elastic. Okay, here we have a coal mine. This is a strip mine that's mining coal. We also have electricity delivered to the house. Of course, the coal is used to help generate the electricity, but which is going to be more elastic? Well, if the cost of electricity goes up, I can easily, you know, make sure that I raise my thermostat a little bit higher and use less air conditioning. I can make sure I'm turning out the lights. Whereas the coal mining company, the change in, in the price of coal, they still have to get coal to the electrical companies, to the utilities to generate electricity. So coal is going to be relatively inelastic. The electricity delivered into the home is going to be quite elastic. And with that, we're going to go ahead and shut off this presentation. Uh, go ahead and check Canvas for an assignment on supply. And in our next lesson, we'll be discussing changes in supply, and we're going to be looking more detail at uh, graphing supply. And with that, I'm going to sign off, and you can go start your assignment in Canvas.